Most Big Ten teams entering the 2024 preseason found themselves with deep questions at the quarterback position, and often with those questions come some glaring concerns. Ohio State's quarterback battle, for example, has been in the news ever since Kyle McCord transferred to Syracuse, and there are concerns about all of their quarterbacks' current ceilings, particularly in the passing game department, more specifically than that, their accuracy. What's going to be their completion percentage? Can they be consistent? It's really a mystery as to whether or not Will Howard and Devin Brown, currently the two front runners in the battle, can be a more accurate passer than Kyle McCord. We know that they're better runners, but can they be a better passer? We don't know, though Julian Sayan may have something to say about that. We know at Michigan, Alex Orgy, Jaden Denegal, and Jack Tuttle are currently battling, and it sounds like from insider reports that Michigan will be searching for a quarterback or two in the transfer portal. With Penn State, Drew Aller, we're almost 100% sure that he's going to be the starter, barring something crazy that happens in the preseason. But can he take a step forward, even a great leap forward, with Andy Kotelnicki becoming the new offensive coordinator, bringing in his creative electric offense, and most of Aller's fellow skill position players are returning with him. Rutgers, though, they have a quarterback battle that's going on. And because Rutgers isn't a Penn State, they aren't a Michigan. They aren't a Ohio State. In terms of recent branding and success, they aren't even a Michigan State or a Maryland. Michigan State has questions of how good Aiden Childs will be. Most think he's going to be good, but can he tap into that elite ceiling? And Maryland is a battle between MJ Morris, incoming transfer from NC State, and Billy Edwards, who's been with the program for quite some time now. Rutgers, though, has a returning quarterback in Gavin Wimsett that was highly recruited out of high school. He was an effective scrambler, effective runner last year, both in scrambling and designed runs. And at times he showed that he still has a high ceiling in the passing game department, that he can have good touch on his passes and good arm strength. But he struggled throughout the year and finished with a 47.8 completion percentage, which is not good. And he only finished with a 55.1 QBR which was 79th in the country. He began the season with a top 25 QBR through four games, and that included a game against Michigan in which he completed over 50% of his passes and did throw a long touchdown and scrambled for some good yards against what likely was the best or one of the best secondaries in college football last season. Rutgers, however, brought in Ethan Kaliak manis to motivate Wimsat to give him some competition, and potentially for Kaliak Manis to start this upcoming season. I think that this job is Wimsatz. I think it's his job to lose, and I think he is going to be starting in 2024. Today we're going to be talking about why I think that way, why I'm higher on Wimsat than I am on Kaliak Manis, and just talk in general about what both of these quarterbacks have to bring to this team. And the Rutgers spring game, it's not this weekend. It's later in the month of April. I, I think, if my memory serves me correctly, it's the last Saturday of April, April 27th. I'm going to be covering that. I'm going to be making an exclusive reaction video to that, like I am for every Big Ten team spring game and weekly spring game preview videos as well, which I'll be talking about Rutgers and the one for the weekend of April 27th. So I'll be talking about this battle then, but this is all in on Rutgers football and the quarterback position today. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Welcome back, fellow football fanatics. It's College Football with Sam. Before we dive any deeper, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and comment your thoughts on this quarterback competition and who do you think gives Rutgers the best chance to win the most possible games, to tap into their ceiling, down in the comments section below. I appreciate the fact that we've crossed 15,000 subscribers recently, and we're trying to hit 20,000 subscribers before the college football season kicks off on August 24th. It's a bold goal, but I think we can do it, especially with me covering the transfer portal, which is going to be absolutely crazy. It'll be interesting to see if any Rutgers players, especially key players, leave, or if Rutgers is able to be one of the winners in this portal cycle, 
or if they face any attrition or additions, and maybe they just weather the storm and are one of the few teams that's relatively unaffected by this portal cycle. But through covering that and making conference preview videos, prediction videos, and the content that we do here on College Football with Sam, which produces the best Big Ten football content on YouTube, I think that we can do it. And there will be a giveaway at 20,000 subs, and the more you like the videos, watch them, engage with them, only if you're interested, of course, the more success we have as a community. Thank you so much to those who go the extra mile and support us on the Patreon. You can find the link to that in the link in the description or below at the top of the pinned comment section. Joining my Patreon is better, actually, than super chatting me in the comment sections below, as Patreon only, only takes about 15% of the money that you pay on site to gain access to bonus content if you're an All-American or Heisman member, or to just be featured at the beginning and end of every video on here with a shout-out at the end if you just want to be an all-conference member. YouTube takes about half of the money that you super chat me, so it's better for you and for me to go on Patreon if you do want to support the channel. Your support, whether in Super Chats, Patreon, or just watching this video right now or subscribing, it's always appreciated. However, it is never expected. I just want to make that clear. You can also support by purchasing merchandise on my store, again, in the description or at the top of the pinned comment in the comment section down below. You can get a Rutgers-themed t-shirt if you want to, with the College Football with Sam logo in Rutgers colors. But let's get back to business, and first and foremost, I want to discuss the starter for Rutgers football last season at quarterback, Gavin Wimsat. Wimsat's best game, it's really hard to put my finger on it, because he didn't have any spectacular performance in any game. ESPN's QBR would say that his best game was against Northwestern, where he had an 88.9 QBR. He was 17 of 29 for 163 yards, a touchdown, and he had 33 rushing yards and a touchdown on the ground. He had more rushing touchdowns, Wimsat did, than passing touchdowns. Again, he is a great scrambler, and with most of Rutgers' offensive line returning for the 2024 season, I guarantee you that he will cross... 500 or let's go higher like 600 rushing yards he will be an even better runner this coming season an even better athlete an offensive line really helps mobile scrambling quarterbacks it's part of the reason that Jaden Daniels down at LSU who's projected to be the number two overall pick in the NFL draft it's part of the reason that he had the Heisman season that he did LSU's offensive line was very mediocre in 2022 and it took great steps forward in 2023, that along with the rest of the offense, which gave Daniels an ability to have the breakout season that I certainly didn't see coming. Wimsack could have that type of season, and some pointed out that in my video where I mentioned Big Ten quarterbacks who could break out, the link to that will be in the top right corner of your screen there. It's just on a little black square that you can click with a little eye icon or an information icon. I didn't include Wimsat in that list, in that video. And some people said it was a snub. And to a certain degree, I can understand that. However, unlike LSU's offense, which really, I mean, took off with wide receivers, tight end Mason Taylor, Daniels was relied upon as the main ground threat, not just, of course, the main air threat being the quarterback. It was a very diverse modern, efficient offense. And I don't anticipate Rutgers with Kirk Shiraka doing anything like that. Even if Wimsat, let's say, was an elite quarterback, became an elite quarterback, you would see it in terms of his completion percentage, his quarterback efficiency rating, his, his touchdowns thrown, and more likely than not, his scrambling yards. I don't think you would see it in his passing yards, though. I don't think you would see just from a average stat line perspective outside of looking deeper into efficiency and completion percentage, I don't think you would see a huge breakout season. Now, I could be wrong, of course, but I didn't include him in the video because I didn't see, not only did I not think it was likely, I don't think that Rutgers' offense is going to rely much on the quarterback position. But 
I am going to be remaking that video along with other content I did in the winter and spring in the summer when things are ramped up. And of course, throughout the year, I study all throughout the preseason right up until kickoff all the different teams just so I can get a better and better understanding of what teams are going to be in the regular season. So maybe he'll be on the list in the next video. But Wimsat, 1,735 passing yards, completed under 50% of his passes, only 6 yards per attempt, nearly had a 1-to-1 -one -one exact touchdown-interception ratio, had almost 500 rushing yards, 11 touchdowns on the ground, and a 55.1 QBR. Good scrambler. He has a high ceiling. I've seen him throw passes to Jaquay Jackson or Christian Dremel or some of the other receivers at Rutgers with touch and with good poise and good ball placement, but I've seen other passes that are just an absolute disaster or they're behind their receivers or over or under them. Very, very inconsistent, Wimsat is, in throwing the ball. High ceiling, low floor, and you don't exactly know what you're going to get out of him when he cocks back his arm and releases. He's raw as a passer, but he's experienced. He's an efficient scrambler. And he showed some signs of competency last year. He's not a great quarterback, not an elite quarterback, certainly. But he can make that jump to good. And I would say good this coming season is in the high 50s, 60s low 60s, like that, I would say probably 57 to 63% completion rating, which would be around a 10%, 10% jump. Not not in like the actual statistical 10% jump, but going from 47 to 57, that would be him completing. I, I think you get what I mean. And then him running for a few hundred more yards, maybe doubling the passing touchdowns that he has, having 18 passing touchdowns at Rutgers with the rushing offense they have, would be absolutely huge. I think what Wimsat gives Rutgers is an athletic quarterback with a high ceiling, with a lot of untapped potential, and with Kirk Shiraka working with Wimsat for double the amount of time that he did last year, I think year one and year two for a quarterback with a new coordinator or coach is when you're going to see the biggest impact of that coach. I think that's absolutely huge. Sharaka did, I think, a good job of developing Tanner Morgan in 2019 and in 2022, two years that Sharaka was at Minnesota. Those were Morgan's most successful seasons, and that was with an interruption in between where after Sharaka left for Penn State, where he was abruptly fired after the COVID year, Minnesota hired Mike Sanford Jr. and turned their offense into basically a service academy offense. Not going to lie, which is why Mike Sanford Jr., of course, was let go. Colorado hires him. And I don't even know where Mike Sanford Jr. is anymore. He's just not a good offensive coordinator. But Wimsat should improve entering this coming season. He has all of his offense, literally all of them, except Jaquay Jackson, and I, I think potentially an offensive lineman, starting guard, if I remember correctly, returning. Manun guy comes back. Most of the O-line does. Christian Dremel returns. Uh, Johnny Langan leaves at tight end, but I think that Rutgers receiver room is more important than their tight end room, and I think last year that was the case as well. So destined to take a step forward, I think, with better coaching, with a better support staff. And he does have a high ceiling, and he gives a level of athleticism that I don't think Kaliak Manis has. Kaliak Manis last year was a better passer than Wimsat was, but it wasn't by much. He tossed 14 touchdowns, threw for 1,838 yards, and that was with a better receiving core. Daniel Jackson was electric last year. He is one of the better wide receivers in the Big Ten, and he was an underrated receiver in the Big Ten last season. We all remember, those of us at least who watched the first Big Ten game kickoff between Nebraska and Minnesota on the Thursday night in September of last season, we all remember that fourth, and I think it was fourth and ten, touchdown pass. It was absolutely awesome. The way that he got his feet in the end zone, his one foot, I think if I remember correctly, it was 
his, I think it was his left foot, though maybe it was his right foot. I don't know, but the full extension, the toe inbounds, it was incredible. Great wide receiver. And he also had Chris Altman Bell and Corey Crooms Jr. Better wide receiver core than what Rutgers had last year, in my opinion. And a much better tight end room with Brevin Spanford and Nick Callerup. And Kaliak Manis couldn't do much. That's why he left Minnesota, and that's why Minnesota brought in Max Brosmer from New Hampshire. They needed better quarterback play. So some could say that Rutgers brought in Kaliak Manis to spur competition. I'd say it's probably more accurate that Minnesota told Kaliak Manis that he was far from being guaranteed the starting QB job at Minnesota this coming season, and he wanted a better chance to start. So it was more him being pushed out rather than other teams seeking his services. And because Kaliak Manis was coached under Shiraka for a year in 2022, where he started a game against Penn State, started against Wisconsin at the end of the year, and started in some other games as well, and, and looked like he could be a good quarterback. He was better in 2022 than he was in 2023. I think he said in his mind, or at least he thought, I know this offensive coordinator, I've worked in his system before, and they have some vulnerabilities at quarterback. So let's see if I can go there and I start this year, or after Wimsat runs out of eligibility, maybe I can start after that. Because Kaliak Manis is a is a younger player. He was a sophomore last year, and Wimsat was a junior, a junior who enrolled early at Rutgers. He took off his senior year of high school, he graduated early, and reclassified to another recruiting class so he could get to Rutgers a year earlier. Like Wimsat, Kaliak Manis is a raw player. Plenty of upside, but also plenty of downside. He has great physical tools. He has arm strength. Accuracy, I gotta be honest, I didn't watch Minnesota probably as much as I did Rutgers last year, though I watched them a lot, because Rutgers was in the Big Ten East. So, and with that being where all the competition is in the Big Ten, thankfully divisions are gone. I think that was a great move. From what I remember, I've seen Wimsat throw balls with good touch. I haven't seen Kaliak Manis throw those type of passes. Now, maybe my memory isn't complete. My memory most definitely isn't complete. Maybe I'm not remembering that properly. But I do think that Wimsat has a higher ceiling than Kaliak Manis does as a passer. And along with his superior athleticism and the fact that he has been in this system for longer being at Rutgers, better team chemistry, and when you, as an offensive coordinator or even a defensive coordinator, when you go from one school to another, especially if you're a good coordinator or better than that, and I would say that Schrock is a good coordinator, you tweak your system to fit the roster, to fit the players. That That's what Jim Knowles has done, going from Oklahoma State to Ohio State. In year one, he kind of ran a very similar system to what he did at Oklahoma State and realized, that, yeah, this isn't going to work in the Big Ten. So he adjusted to what the Big Ten conference is, to what Ohio State football is, to what Ohio State wants to do. And they had one of the best defenses in the country last year, and they're projected to have the best defense in the country this year per SP+, Plus, which is a very accurate metric in both preseason and, more importantly, the regular season. And Kirk Scirocco is a good coordinator. I don't think he's an elite coordinator like Jim Knowles, but he's good. And he has a habit of doing more with less. So where I was going with that is the fact that both of these quarterbacks should improve. And they're not that far off. But Wimsat, I think, is slightly better and also has a higher ceiling in every category. And with him being at Rutgers and being the starting quarterback last year, that does give him an edge, a sizable edge. All those little advantages that Wimsat has, I think, compounds into a pretty sizable advantage in this competition. Barring injury, I think that Wimsat will start. But who knows? Kaliak Manis completed, had a higher completion percentage last year, completed 53.1% of his passes. He scrambled for two touchdowns last year. For 94 yards, Minnesota had probably their worst offensive line since the 2020 season 
or even before that. Last year, they returned a lot more production this year in the trenches. I think the move from Minnesota will benefit the Gophers and also benefit Kayak Manis. That that was a a a move, an exit by Kayak Manis that I think benefits both parties. Benefits Rutgers, benefits Minnesota, benefits Kayak Manis, I think, himself. So it was a good move, I think, for him, for that young man, for him to make that decision. But I do think that it's Wimsat's job to lose. I think he's the better player and his legs, and I think familiarity with the system are the biggest reasons why Wimsat will have an edge and start over Kaliak Manis. And I think that there is a chance, even though I didn't put his name and mention him in my Big Ten quarterbacks who could break out in 2024 video, again, because I think... How do I put this? I don't think the system is quarterback and numbers friendly, and I I have a hard time seeing Wimsat just explode onto the scene and all of a sudden be this great quarterback, given the fact that he started in 23 and also started some in 22, and we've seen him consistently complete less than 50% of his passes and honestly seem to be a better scrambler than a passer, a better rusher. But he could break out. He has the tools. He has the talent. And I think right now, more than ever, he has the supporting cast. So he'll win this job. And in my next video where I talk about Big Ten quarterbacks or even quarterbacks around the college football world, for you or those of you who mentioned that I snubbed him from my list, I will make sure to mention him, to at least give him a mention and some of my time. Because if he turns out to be a good quarterback this coming year, and not just a below-average quarterback with a good scrambling ability, Rutgers is going to be even more dangerous than I already think they're, they are. And I think they're a top 25 team right now. But that's all I have to say in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and comment your thoughts on this video down below. Thanks to Crash2488 for sponsoring this video and channel as a Heisman member. Thanks to Spencer Bringhurst, Chris Lane, and SFS Inver for sponsoring this video and channel as all American members. Thanks to Will Loftus, John Lynn, Roaming Gnome, Matthew Sale, Austin Christmas, and Janisha Cockrell for sponsoring this video as all conference members. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.